At Retrovision, we know exactly what you want, like our lowest price guarantee. Buy now and pay later. And an extra 5% discount for RAC members. That's on top of all the latest tech from the world's best brands at Retrovision. Started with four, and now there are only three still in the race for T20 glory in the Peel Cricket Association with Shoalwater Bay winning the first semi final against single turner Winians in the Retrovision Premier T20 League this week. We'll chat a little bit about that in this week's show. Shoalwater Bay as well have continued on the rise. So they are on the rise in the Wiley Cup with their continued winning form and they've consolidated second spot there in the A-grade competition of the Peel Cricket Association. And Jack Manuel is human after all the Perth Scorchers. They are going to light up the state this weekend with their um, the start of the Big Bash finals campaign against the arch rivals, the arch nemesis in the Sydney Sixers. We'll have a little chat about that as well because we've got a lot of people speaking about that. All of a sudden, the cricket season's up and about. Um, we're nearly at the end of January. It's been going since October, but hey, that's Australia for you. Um, PCA, Peel Cricket Association, are back in country cup action this weekend in the third and final round, final instalment of the country cup for the 22-23 season, where a win will most likely see Peel Cricket go through to the final against pro- most likely Bunbury Cricket Association in a... Um, a bit of a ding-dong battle um, against the arch nemesis there. And the top four in the ladies is looking quite settled in the ladies T20 with the top four sides winning their matches on the weekend. And we'll have a very brief discussion there as we try to fit everything into this jam-packed edition of the Pavilion, the Peel Cricket Show. My name's Orazio Santa Lucia. I am your host and I'm here every week with pleasure, providing you with all the action, all the news, and all the exciting stuff that happens within Peel Cricket. Now, this show is not, um, will not happen and can't happen without the support of our fantastic sponsors in Retrovision, ESA Sports, and Everlast Sports Drinks. Now, Retrovision currently have got their half yearly clearance. They've got massive store-wide savings. All the stuff you need is on sale now. They only do this twice a year. Um, with lowest price guaranteed, 60-day price promise, and an extra 5% off if you are an RAC member. Be mad to go anywhere else. If you jump on the website, you will see some of the specials. I just jumped on just before, and it nearly blew my mind. Um, like, there's TVs that are going for, like, you know, $1,300 um, under what they normally go for, and they've already got low prices. So um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a massive clearance. So um, if you're looking for any of the electrical stuff that you love, the white goods and everything in between, go to Retrovision right now. ESA Sports Agency, a sports agency that delivers. They deliver sports coaching, custom design, apparel, and team wear. Um, they do um, sports memorabilia. They do pop-up marquees, um, feather banners, um, and, and all that sort of stuff, all the stuff that uh, the collateral that helps to sell your brand. Um, they are the distributors of Everlast Sports Drinks, and they also are able to get you in contact with sports stars and legends for things like um, uh, awards evenings and, and things like that. Get a big name attached to your awards night, and you'll see the crowds flock in there. So ESA Sports Agency, John Sanders, um, as you can see there, uh, sales at esasportsagency.com.au and the mobile number is there. John Sanders is the MD. Get in contact there for all your 
Um, to make all your sporting moments epic and Everlast Sports Drinks, they are the distributors. That's the good stuff. 750 ml bottles, isotonic hydration, less sugar, three great flavors, fantastic price point. Why would you buy anything else for your club fridges? Get that Everlast in your fridges now. Okay. So that is a huge intro to what's going to be a very, very busy, very packed show. Uh, we're going to try to condense it all to within about 50 minutes. Um, so you can go away and you know exactly what's happening in Peel Cricket. We are in that second half. We are now on the race home. We've got finals galore. We've got uh, Retrovision Premier T20 League. We've got the second semi coming up next Tuesday. And that'll be between um, Hallshead and Mandra, calling it the Battle of the Bridge. Um, and they'll be playing off to then get through to the grand final. Um, we already know one of the grand finalists in Showwater Bay, who's going to be the next one. Um, the the ladders are really starting to settle themselves now in um, the Peel Cricket Association um, Saturday competition premiership season. We're going to see teams really start to ramp it up now. Some you know, can, can have a real late run and, and get through. Others will be doing their best to get a really good position in the finals. Um, others will need to start working out how they're going to set up their finals teams because um, some teams are doing it quite comfortably and uh, noticeably some guys that aren't getting much of a bat or a bowl, um, you know, and that happens. So now it's up to uh, the clubs to start to work at how they're going to really prepare and ramp up for the finals because um, they are rare and there are plenty of people that don't get to play finals. They don't get to play often when you get there, you want to make the most of it. Um, that is a pretty packed start, I reckon. So what we might do is we might go to a break. We might hear from some of our sponsors and we'll be right back. Our AC members get exclusive deals and offers plus an extra 5% off on top of our lowest price guarantee at Retrovision. Welcome back to the Pavilion, the Peel Cricket Show, proudly brought to you by Retrovision, ESA Sports and Everlast Sports Drinks. Just wanted to have a little chat about um, the Big Bash. It's obviously starting to fire up now. We're into the final uh, period. Um, the, the, we've got the... the I think it's called the qualifier. They, they, look, they've changed the way they're all named. Um, in an eight-team comp, five are through to a final series. Look, we could have a chat about that for a long, long time. But what we're going to talk is all things Perth Scorchers. Our favourite team, that magnificent franchise, um, took on and, and really embraced Big Bash from ball one. And that is why we are the most successful brand in in the nation. And uh, we're well on our way to um, going through to another big bash final, which is fantastic. I know that there's going to be a big, big crowd this weekend. It's probably going to impact club cricket. I know it's already going to impact some of the PCA games, um, people going along to the game. And I understand the excitement. I understand it. Um, you know, maybe there could have been some consideration of that when they put the game on, on, on a Saturday. Um, Cause it, it, it was always going to affect club cricket and you're going to see uh, not only ours, um, you're going to see a lot of other, Teams maybe struggle, um, you know, to get teams out on the park simply because people want to want to go. Maybe teams can start games earlier. I don't know. Um, I'm still think a lot of junior cricket's not on yet, so um, maybe there's a possibility to start games earlier, finish earlier, and enable everyone to get off to up the stadium to go watch our Perth Scorchers get through. Um, wouldn't it be good to beat the Sydney Sixers? They're all up and about. Um, that man Smith going um, Coco Bananas at the moment and, and scoring runs for fun, but we've got the bowling attack that can do some damage if they get out on the park. Um, it looks like we've lost Ashton Agar. He's already gone off to India, I believe, or he's preparing to go off to India. Uh, there's going to be a group of the spinners, I believe, are going over early to uh, acclimatize and, and do their best to prepare for the upcoming test series, which is going to be an absolute humdinger as well, isn't it? Australia and India. Um, but we're going to talk more scorchers here. Um, you know, there's a really good WA flavor throughout, obviously out our, our WA team, um, chock full of, of, of WA talent. Um, we've got a really good overseas. I think in um, Eskenazi sort of come in under the radar. A lot of WA people may know him. He's played a lot of club cricket. Um, He's, he's actually staying at his family's house. There's not many overseas players that come over and stay at their family's house, but that's what he's doing. Starting to fit in well. Uh, David Payne will probably have to step up and bowl bowl again. Um, he's been a late inclusion because we've lost 
fair few plays, but we get used to that. Um, we've we've done that throughout the history of the uh, the Perth Scorchers, and it's our depth that gets us through. And and in, any good side, any good organisation, it's it's from top to bottom and everyone in between that makes up any success. Um, it's going to be a tough game, no doubt, but let's hope that the forty or fifty thousand screaming orange army that turn up can uh, help get the Scorchers over the line and book their spot in the grand final, which will obviously be played here at Optus Stadium. And that will be another humdinger. It'll be great to see a big cricket crowd. So if you can get there, um, if you can start games earlier, make sure that everyone wins, not only uh, the people that go and want to watch and support our first Scorchers, but also um, our, our club cricket, because we want that to continue and go well. Speaking of club cricket, let's get the ladies cricket up and about. Um, a couple of things I want to talk about there. First of all, obviously, we uh, it was round 11 that we got through this weekend gone, or weekend last weekend, this weekend gone, however you want to call it. Um, and the top four is really starting to look settled there with um, Hall's Head leading the way there on 40 points, South Mandra second, so they are the reigning premiers. Um, so they're just behind. Um, Shoalwater Bay and Warmbra are on 32 points in third and fourth. Uh, in fifth, the Mandra on 20. And then Secret Harbour, Pinjarra and White Knights uh, make up the rest. I don't see them really factoring in. Mandra will have a re real tough run. So I reckon the top four will be as it is. It may change uh, order, um, but the top four will probably be what it'll be. And it'll be very, very good to see. Um, and they've got... We go back to our trusty my cricket. So on the weekend, just gone. Um, on Sunday the twenty second, we saw South Mandra beat Mandra. That was their battle of the bridge, I guess. Uh, South Mandra two for one hundred and thirty three, defeated Mandra six for eighty three. Um, we had Muir with twenty five retired. Geez, they've got a, look. They've got an S Smith as well. <laughs> a Sarah Smith though. Uh, she got twenty retired. Uh, S Christie got eighteen retired. So they batted really, really well. Um, and then. In reply, Mandra, six for 83. Um, Emily Sharp got 20 uh, retired there. And uh, with the ball, oh, Muir. Ava Muir, three for nine on top of her, what was her score again? Three for nine on top of her 25 knot. Um, player of the match there, I'd say would be Ava Muir. <laughs> so well done there. Hall's head, six for one, four, two. Defeat of White Knights, four for 110. Um, Kim Nicholson with 37. We had um, Montana Kelly Wilson, 24, retired. We had uh, Philippa Warren with 27, not out. Um, and with the ball for um, White Knights, we had Casey Barber with a two for 15. And with the bat in making 110 for the White Knights, well, <laughs> there you go. Casey Barber also got 29, retired. Um, and with the ball, Montana Kelly Wilson with two for five, had a great game there. Shoalwater Bay defeated Secret Harbour, six for 112. Shoalwater defeated Secret Harbour, six for 93. Um, good spread of batting. Everyone sort of got in, in amongst it for Shoalwater. Um, with the ball, the wickets were shared around. And with the bat for Secret Harbour, we had Carly Woodley with 21 top score there and um we had uh Rhea Chandler with two for eight leading the way for Shoalwater with the ball and in the final game we had Warmbra four for one four five not a bad game here Pinjara two for one two six for Warmbra we had Shay Heinsen with 25 retired we had Simone McCann also with 25 retired and for Pinjara we had uh, Rebecca Raston with 22 retired. We had Helen Moore with 22 retired and um, just a couple of wickets taken there for Warmer. So another, another good game. So women's cricket really hotting up there. Um, we've got women's cricket, uh, the T20 World Cup about to kick off very, very soon in South Africa. Australia currently playing and just doing what they do, flexing the muscle and dominating against uh, an emerging team in Pakistan. So it'd be good for them to come out here and, get a bit of experience. I mean, it's always going to be tough um, against the, you know, the, the superstar team that are the Australians, but um, it's not going to grow unless these teams play. So it, it is what it is. Um, now, 
just before we move off uh, uh, ladies cricket or women's cricket, we've got the Women's Country Week coming up very, very soon in that March long weekend. Um, we'll be getting some info out in the next day or so. Um, so head to websites, head to our socials, Peel Cricket Association on Facebook, uh, peelcricket.com. Um, speak to your club delegate and your club coaches and get the information on nominating, uh, registering to play in the Country Week team. Um, the next two Country Weeks are going to be held in Bunbury. So a pretty nice close trip for us, not too far away. Um, and we want to build on the momentum that uh, started last year in particular, where the girls got their first win, um, really got some good excitement there and we want to really progress this thing forward. Also watch this space, just having some discussions in the background in regards to women's cricket and female cricket and female development and what we can do in the Peel region with all our stakeholders, not only Peel Cricket Association, we've got Peel Junior Cricket Association and Rockingham Mandra District Cricket Club. So um, just putting some final things together before we make an announcement, but just watch this space. We're going to really try to make a big push and make sure that every person in the community has an opportunity to develop and grow and be the best they can be wherever that takes them. Great. Um, but we just want to provide quality cricket experiences for every member of our community, including our fantastic women that are out there supporting and playing and loving cricket. It is that game. It's the game that we all love. And that's why we're here. That's why you're on the pavilion, the Peel Cricket Show. Okay. We'll progress on to, um, we'll, we'll talk um, Country Cup, which is coming up this Sunday. Country Cup is, um, uh, well, it's it's the Belt Up Country Cup. So it is proudly sponsored there by the uh, the um, Road Traffic or Road Safety Commission. Um, they support a lot of sport around WA, but um, in particular, they, they do country sport because obviously we've got roads that go for kilometres and kilometres and kilometres. And with that, um, obviously has increased danger in regards to road safety, et cetera. So the Belt Up Country Cup uh, was born a while ago and uh, is continuing strong. And we're very proud to be part of that. We're also proud to be um, one win away, most likely from getting through to the final of that competition. Um, still got to win this Sunday, which will be a tough game against the WA Invitational 11. The Invitational 11 is basically made up of um, regional associations and regional uh, areas that don't have a fully fledged team that's playing in this comp. Um, and you can imagine logistically, if you're from the Pilbara or from um, the Kimberley or even the Goldfields uh, playing on a Sunday, it's just, it's logistically very, very difficult. You'd have to literally stop playing on Saturday and travel and, and it just doesn't work. Um, so what the country cricket board do is basically put in a, uh, an all-star team um, of players made up and it's easier to get a couple of players from here and there to make up a team than it is, to bring a whole squad. Um, so we'll be playing against them. It'll be at Breckler Park, which is the home of Mount Lawley District Cricket Club. Um, and that'll be an 11 a.m. start where it'll most likely be on Frogbox. So you'll be able to tune in there, um, jump on the Pavilion the Peel Cricket channel on the YouTube channel um, or go to the Country Cricket Board uh, My Cricket page, I guess, of, of the app. Um, look up Belt Up Country Cup and then look up the scorecard and then you'll be able to click through from there as you do most other Saturdays for um, any of the other Frog Box games. Um, we nearly had we nearly had a bit of a coup in our selection, but um, a young player was uh, made unavailable in the end for a very, very good reason. So we won't, won't go into that necessarily, but what I can tell you is what the squad looks like. And, and that's what it looks like right now. As you know, with any team you select, um, you know, things happen. There's, there's Saturday still obviously with injuries and all that sort of stuff. But as we speak right now on Thursday night, Australia day, happy Australia day to everyone, um, celebrate it how, and whatever you want. We not going to go into any political sort of discussions. Um, it is currently still Australia day, the 26th of January. Anyway, what the team looks like as we speak right now, um, Dan Abel, who's a uh, returned from WA country 11 duty and did very, very well. Ben Britton from, uh, so Dan Abel, Pinjara as well. Um, ben Britton, Mandra, I'm um, having a really great year. The all-rounder, um, new recruit this year, come over from um, that pretty good part of the world in Victoria. Um, don't shoot me, don't shoot him. Um, from the Mornington Peninsula in that particular region there. Uh, Damien Burridge, um, also 
just back from WA Country 11 duty. Um, he's obviously got connections with Hall's Head as well as Rockingham Mandra. Uh, Prav Chahal um, having a great season, I think, for Waruna there. The Englishman, the overseas player. Dudley Cortland just doing what Dudley does, continuing on his merry way, doing a great job with the stick there for Shoalwater Bay. Um, Mitch Oliver is um, going to be playing. Now, he plays for Shoalwater Bay in the T20 competition, um, plays some cricket at Rockingham Mandra as well, um, and played all his junior cricket throughout the PJCA and doing some really great stuff with the ball as an emerging leg spinner. And I, I'm, I'm going to put it out there. He's arguably the best fielder going around um, in well, in this area anyway, and be one of the better fielders in, in the state. He is a fantastic fielder, has done some great stuff, did some great stuff on during the week in the T20 competition. Um, if you wanted to just quickly jump on and see some of his fielding, it was amazing. And he does it every week. So uh, Mitch Oliver, welcome. This will be his first game for the senior competition. Uh, skipper again will be Rudgy, Josh Rudge, plays for Hall's Head. Kane Standing, Kappa, oh, Kappa. Captain, captain for Warmbra, um, uh, Daniel Sutton Jr., uh, one of the leading wicket takers, doing well. The big left armour, um, he's got a call up. Uh, Brad Williams, uh, Brad Williams, White Knights, Beldivis, Brad Williams, the South African, well, he's a national or nationalising himself to Australia, all that sort of stuff. That Brad Williams, I know there's two, um, and Jake Wiley, um, really doing some really good stuff for Hall's Head there as well. Uh, off spinner, uh, middle order batter, good fielder. Um, be really, really good to see him get involved as well. So we're probably one player um, down at the moment, uh, and that will be filled within the next few days. But that's the team that's going to go out there and hopefully um, do us proud and get us over the line. And hopefully that means we get through to the final, which will be Feb 26, I believe. Um, and that will be at... Come on, think, boy. Um, well, I'll tell you, I'll be able to tell you if we get through, because if we don't get through, oh, well, probably don't really care too much. That's my dog barking in the background, but um, I'll go and see why she's doing that. Whilst we go to a break, remember, the Pavilion, the Peel Cricket Show, is proudly brought to you by Retrovision, ESA Sports, and Everlast Sports Drinks. And also, you probably listening to this, if you are listening on a Saturday morning, between 8 and 9 a.m. on Sport FM, 91.3 Sport FM, um, the home of community sport. Um, fantastic that they've uh, partnered up with us as well. And we're on the air every Saturday morning between 8 and 9, 91.3 Sport FM. If you are listening and it is Saturday morning, thanks for tuning in. And um, we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the only show that you want to listen to if you want to know anything about Peel Cricket. Um, it's, there's a lot happening, and if you really want to know what's going on, this is the place to be, the Pavilion, the Peel Cricket Show. Welcome back. We're going to go into some results from the weekend gone in the Peel Cricket Association. Uh, we're in round 13. We've just gone, come and gone. Um, we've got uh, another five rounds to go before we hit the finals. So before you know it, we'll be in the finals, uh, which will be the 11th of March. So we haven't got that long to go. So any teams that want to have a, have a late run and put the, you know, put the big sail up and catch the wind and on the run home, this is the time to do it because it's now or never. And uh, first game we'll go into quickly is uh, Mandra. Mandra versus Singleton and Winians. We're in A grade, the Wiley Cup, the race for the Wiley Cup, that Wiley name synonymous with cricket in the region. Um, and it's a very, very proud cup and a proud trophy that we all play for in the A grade. And uh, things are really starting to hot up there. So Mandra played single turn Irwinians. Uh, Mandra all out one, two, eight. And then they defended that by bowling out the Irwinians for one, two, one. Really, really close one, that one. Um, with the bat, obviously, in the score of one, two, eight. Um, you know, guys got starts, but there's a lot of, go a lot of single digit figures. Um, Jay Boyd. Um, funny enough, former uh, Singleton Winian moved over to Mandra this year, 25 not out in a long innings off 61 balls, uh, trying to hold it together before they were all bowled out for 128. Um, and with the ball, wickets shared around all amongst the Singleton bowlers. And then with the bat, 
in reply, Nathan Anderson with 38 led the way there for Singleton. Um, he did that rather slowly as well, um, off 68 balls. But um, they just kept losing wickets in um, and and couldn't really get a partnership going. And in the end, they'll bowl out for 121. That man, Ben Britton, again, four for 19 off seven. And uh, Chris Chalou, three for 22 with the main destroys there. They took seven wickets between them in 15 overs for, yeah, what are we talking, uh, you know, 41 runs. So that's where the damage was done. Uh, two of the better bowlers in the competition, and they showed why. So good game, that one. Uh, low scoring game, but a, but a good game and, and good for Mandra to get back on the winning uh well, I'll get back on the on the winning table after having lost a few games in a row there. Uh, next game, Hall's Head versus Warmbro. The old grand final replay. This one was at Curry Street Reserve. Um, always a tough place to play. Ball keeps a bit low there. Um, anyway, Hall's Head eight for one seven four. And as I said in the in, intro for this week, uh, Jack Manuel two only got the two this week. Um, he was. Uh, Court standing bold Kieran Ugal. So the Wiley veteran there in, in Keza Ugal found the edge. Uh, no one really finds the edge of Jack's bat there, but obviously got a edge through to Kane standing, and that was that. And they would have been pretty happy. But uh Josh Rudge held the innings together, the skipper, 46, just starting to hit a bit of form. Second half of the season, just as and obviously going to hit into finals. Tim Miles continued his good all-round season with 39. Um, they got up to eight for 174 at the end of their 50 and wickets shared around by Warmbra. And in reply, they could only get to 120. Um, no one really got going. There was a few starts. So they got some 16s and 13s and 19s, but no one really kept um, the moment. No one went on to make a big score and chasing 174, you need at least one really solid partnership and one person to get a, you know, in your top four normally to get a 50 plus and that sort of nearly just about gets you over the line, but no one could do that. Um, and the, uh, the old silver Fox in Chris Phelps got four for 28. And uh, he continues his spot at the top of the wicket taking tally with 22 wickets for the season and an average of about eight. So he's doing really well. Uh, White Knights, Bell Divers, they're also doing really well. And um, they're in the top. I think they're in the top. Well, I'll just check very quickly. They, yep. Yeah, they are. They're third. They are in the top four, and uh, they continued their um their winning form by beating Pinjara. Pinjara all out for 128. Um, uh, with that, again they had uh, Jake Foley captain with 26, and uh, Michael Raston with 23. Uh, wickets wise, uh, three for seven for Ben Merrifield. He led the way there. And then in reply, three for 134. White Knights did it quite comfortably. Cam and Cam Rain got 50 or 58, four sixes and three four. So did it quite quickly. A couple of thirties there, including Brad Williams and uh, Gareth Truwu. And uh, no one really did much with the ball. And they did that in 20 overs. So they went quick. They went hard and got the game over and done with. So well done, White Knights, Bell Divers. And Shoulder Bay, the team that are, they're flying home with that wet sail. They did this last year, if you can remember. Um, they're really starting to hit some good form. They played Waruna at Waruna. Um, Shaw would have got 205 all out. Um, that man, Dudley Cortland, again, he got another 50, 53. Um, I think that works out to be his... Um, uh, so if you go in just A grade, A grade, and I can use our trusty my cricket here. Just go A grade, Wiley Cup. Set the filter, and he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, six fifties this season in um, 11 hits. That's pretty good going there by Mr. Cortland. Um, he's doing really well. He got 53. Um, Dale Norman got 48, and Charles Kunji got 38 in their score of 205. With the ball, Damo Stanley with his leg spinners doing really well. Uh, four for 54 if he's 10, and Tom Shannon got three for 41. In reply, Waruna, they were all out for 171. Um, uh, Pro Chahal got 60 of those, and he was the mainstay. No one else really. Shannon got 31. That's about it. Uh, with the ball, we saw Seth Kennedy get four for 31, and Liam Richardson got three for 30. So really good win there by Shoalwater Bay. 
and they consolidate their spot in second on the table in the Wiley Cup. Paul's head still top. Um, and then we have Waruna in fourth on 48 points. Warmer on fifth, 44. So they're a game out. And um, this is where it starts getting tight. They, they can't really afford to, to drop any more games. And then from there on, uh, it's going to be hard. Mandra is six on 29. Pinjara 26 and seventh. But I think they're too far behind. So it'll be for the top five that make the top four, if that makes any sense. And um, you're probably thinking the Waruna Warmbra could swaps, maybe, depending. Um, and Warmbra would be desperate to defend their A-grade title that they won very, very well last year in a memorable final, wasn't it? B-grade. What did we see in B-grade? We saw um, we saw some low scores. Um, I know that much. So we saw Hall's head just flex their muscle in B-grade as well. Eight for 238. In that, we saw Levi Muller get 75. He was the mainstay there. Uh, we saw Tyler Nadu get 39. Um, with the ball, wickets were shared around by Warmbra. And in reply, they were all out for 98. So no one really got going there. Um, with the ball, we saw Mitch Morley get three for seven off seven overs. So he was the uh, main destroyer there. But uh, Warmbra all out for 98, 140 run win by Halls here. That's a big, big win. Uh, Rockingham Hornets and White Knights. Rockingham hosted White Knights. Uh, Rockingham all out 67. Not a great day at the office there. Um, with the ball, we saw uh, Armadeep Gill. We've seen Armadeep a few times in the Retrovision Premier T20 League bowling his lovely little in swingers to the right hander, five for 12. Um, and I can understand that when, when he's on, I reckon he'd be very, very difficult to play. So well done, Amadeep, five for 12. That's a very, very good Michelle there. And uh, White Knight's got that three down. Um, Reed Stewart with 51 off only 36 balls. So he was in a hurry and they did that in 11 overs. So A and B grade were back at um, Bell Divers very, very quickly on uh, Saturday night, weren't they? Uh, they got their games done and dusted quite quickly. Amandra beat Pinjara uh, by five wickets, five for 124, played Pinjara all out one, two, two. Um, just good all round game there. I think no one really, oh no, we saw Jezza Leather Barrow, the veteran left-hander, 56 off 57, going at a good clip there. Um, he was the mainstay of Mandra's innings there. So well done there to Mandra. And, uh, whoa, shoulder to bay, six yeah, this one's not a very pretty one. This is a pretty ugly one. North Bell Divers, I know, have got some um, some issues with their um, well, playing lineup, I guess. There's been a few players that are now unavailable and have uh, moved on. So they're, they're just going through a little bit of a, a tough time. And um, they've just hit a rampaging shoulder bay. Six for 317. We don't see that sort of score anywhere, really, but in B grade in particular, very often. And they went on to win by 289 runs after they bowled North Bell Divers out for 28. Um, we saw Mitch Smith take four for 15. Um, and Nick Ranford take five for six. They just ran through them. After making 317, uh, Chris Beal got 83 not out. Uh, Liam Cox got 60 and Mitch Smith got 55 not out <laughs> off only 14 deliveries with seven sixes and uh, two fours. That would have been something to watch there. Um, obviously a bit of a mismatch there, but you can only play who's in front of you. And that uh, is big, big win for Shoalwater in the B grade uh, ladder. We see white Knights on top with 47 Hall's head on 45 in second Mandra and 41 in third. Showwater in fourth, um, big boost to the percentage, obviously, 36. The Hornets on 35, and there I think it's the top five that go in there. So it'll be a playoff between, or well, it may be from three to five to see who gets in there. So well done there to everyone there in B grade. That's what it looks like there. C grade, quick look at the scores, some close games. Uh, Mandra defeated Hall's head by three wickets, seven for 183 to Hall's head, all out 180. Um, just a good all round game for everyone there. Just seeing if there's any standouts. Uh, we saw Stuart Moore take four for 31 in bowling hall set out for 180. So that was a, a close game there. Um, we saw secret Harbor get a win over white Knights bell divers by one run 
So obviously, well, I'm saying obviously, I'm just going to make sure that I've got this right. Secret Harbour won the toss batter first. They got seven for 178. And White Knights could only get 177 in reply. Oh, dear. That would have been a tight one there. Um, for Secret Harbour, we see Jack McClay get 42 not out. Uh, with the ball, wickets shared around there for White Knights. And in reply, we see Hayden Kaya get 61. And uh, Kalani Scarrett get 42 not out to just about get their team over the line, but not quite. So good win there for Secret Harbour. Shoulder Bay defeats Singleton and Winnings by 48 runs. Um, just a all-round sort of game there. No one really went a Coco Bananas, so we'll just leave it at that. And North Bell Divers got the win over South Mandra by seven wickets. Uh, nine for 197 in South Mandra. And that's done by a bit of everyone. Um, wickets shared around for North Bell Divers. And in reply, we saw, wow, Rob Furza. Having said, well, it's his first game. Just turns up and gets 129, not out, off 128 balls. So uh, that's a good start to the season. So um, mainstay of North Bell Divers, 198, and their win on the weekend. So that's C grade and C grade ladder looking like this. North Bell Divers on top, 48. Showwater on second, uh, in second with 40. White Knights third with 33. Mandra fourth, 27 points. Singleton fifth on 26. Horsehead sixth on 22. South Mandra seventh on 21. So that, well, and even Secret Harbour on 19. I'm, I'm going to call it. I reckon everyone's still in the race here. Um, so C grade's probably the one to watch. Every team is still in the race. So uh, good luck to everyone there. B grade, Richie Cup. Some good scores here. Uh, White Knights, five for 274. They defeated Warmbra all out 226. So big scoring game there for, um, for White Knights in getting 274. We see, um, well, new recruit former North Bell Divers player, Punya Jeet. He got 121 off only 91 balls for sixes and 16 boundaries. That would have been entertaining to watch. Um, and then in reply, Warmbra gave it a good shake, all out for 226. We see Travis Gordon get 60 and uh, Stephen Cairns get 59, put on a big partnership of 124. And um, what nights would have been a little bit worried there, but the bowlers went to work. And um, I can't help but say it, okay, whenever I see this name, I, I just think Liverpool um, of the 80s. And you, if, if you know the world game, you'd know why. Simon Grobelaar. Um, captain got four for 47 to lead the way for, um, white Knights with the ball. So what well on there, um, Showwater Bay, the, the club's doing well at the moment. Uh, five for 170 defeated Singleton all out 64. Um, we see Graham Spinks get 66 as the mainstay there for, um, Showwater Bay. And in reply, no one got any runs. Obviously when you make 64 and wickets shared all around by, Shoulder to base, a good win there, and another close game. Three run victory to Rockingham Hornets. Batted first against Hall's Head, all out for 1 1 6, and Hall's Head in reply, all out 1 1 3. That would have been a nail biter, no doubt. Um, 44 by Sean Drysdale leading the way for Rockingham. Uh, wicket shared amongst the Hall's Head bowlers, and in reply for Hall's Head. Um, it, just to share, oh no, we see, uh, Brody Faccioni with five for 21 to get his team over the line in bowling out Hall's head for 113. So that would have been a really good night celebration there in D grade. What's a D grade ladder look like very quickly. White Knights on top there, Rockingham on at second. They're clear first and second, third clear, pretty much shoulder to bay 65 points. And then fourth, fifth and sixth are all very tight. Fifth and sixth are 52 points apiece, and that's Waruna and Warmbra. Hall's heading fourth on 54. So out of a 17 comp, six are still in the race there. So we've got a tight, tight competition there. E grade, um, we see uh, White Knights play Warmbra. I'm back in D grade there. Come on. Uh, Pinjara beat Hall's head. By 24 runs, 139 played, 115. Uh, White Knights beat Mandra by, uh, what are we going to say there? Um, 20 runs, uh, 124 played Mandra, nine for 104. 
Secret Harbour Dockers had a massive win against Warmbra Purple. Uh, eight for 228 for Secret Harbour. Just going to see if someone got a big score there. Um, we see uh, Jake who came in get 58 to lead the way there. And with the ball, they bowled out Warmbra for 62. So just wondering whether someone got a lot of wickets. No, they were shared around. Team game. So big, big win there for Secret Harbour. And North Belt Ivis, uh, six for 165, defeated Warmbra Black. Um, all out 158 in another tight game there. Um, shared runs there, shared wickets there. In the first innings, just check Warmbras, see if anyone went Coco Bananas there. No, everyone sort of shared it around. So good game, good cricket there. What's the ladder look like in E grade? Um, White Knights, Secret Harbour, uh, clear first and second. Mandra, clear third. Then you've got North Belt Ivers on 65, Warmbra on 56. They're the teams that will play off, I dare say, for the rest. And F grade, um, if we just quickly go to F grade, we have uh, White Knights Gold. They were winners. They beat Shoulder Bay. We saw Warmbra beat uh, Rockingham Hornets in a close one there by three wickets. Uh, we see Singleton beat White Knights Blue by uh, 96 runs. And, oh, no. <laughs> if there's a club that's ever going to be in a tie, it is Hall's Head. I haven't, had, I haven't had a chance this week, unfortunately, to see the scores. Uh, one, five, six apiece, Mandra and Hall's Head. And if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I reckon they had a tie last year. I could be wrong, but I know Hall's Head have had numerous ties throughout. Uh, Brad Raymond got 66 not out for Hall's Head. Um, with the ball, we see Taj Bailey get four for 16 and Wayne Draper get four for 34 for Mandra. And in Mandra's, well, not winning, but not losing reply. Everyone got some runs. Uh, everyone shared the wickets around for Hall's Head and one, five, six apiece. You would not believe it, would you? Uh, F grade ladder looks pretty tight here. So 95 points. Uh, first and second, both teams on 95 points, and that's Warmbra and White Knights Gold. Uh, Rockingham Hornets on third on 94 points. So top three, they're, they're done and dusted. Uh, White Knights Blue on 79, I dare say, oh, well, they, they seem safe. Singleton on in fifth on 65, uh, Showwater on 55, and Hall's Head on 48. They're probably too far behind. So maybe Singleton had a push might be able to get into that top four. But Warmbra, two White Knights teams and Rockingham Hornets are probably looking like the finalists. That there, my friends, is what the Peel Cricket Association looks like for this week. Um, or last week, just gone. So the results are all starting to really hot up. What does this week look like in A grade? If we just quickly look at that, uh, it'll be round 10. I want to make sure I've got that one wrong. Let's go to A grade. There we go. A grade will be round 14. I thought that didn't sound right. We will see White Knights take on Warmbra. That'll be a really good game. That's at Baldivis District Sporting Complex, the new ground for White Knights Baldivis. If you get a chance to get down there, that's a really good complex. The indoor stadium looks pretty good. Um, and that'll be a pretty good one for everyone. Um, there, Pinjarra take on Secret Harbour. Um, I think that'll be a tight game, Secret Harbour, with a chance to, to you know, to compete anyway um, against Pinjarra. Pinjarra, pretty good tight side at home, so that'll be a tough one. Waruna host Mandra. Waruna get a run of games at home because they, they don't play a lot at the start of the season. The ground's a bit uh, wet from the winter, so Mandra get up to Waruna, and that'll be a tough game there. And Hall's Head take on Singleton Irwinians at Peelwood Reserve. Um, I know that Singleton are going to be struggling for numbers this week. So, uh, yeah, that yeah, that, that's probably a good opportunity for Hall's Head to um, uh, see how some of the other players can go. Um, that's the way I'm going to put that one. And Shoulder Bay um, have a well-deserved break. And I dare say a few of those guys are probably heading off to Optus Stadium to um, watch our Perth Scorchers. Now, Retrovision Premier T20 League. First semi-final, we just had it. And uh, that was Shoulder Bay versus Singleton Irwinians. 
We'll have a quick chat about that in the next segment before we wrap up this baby and um, go off into the distance, into the sunshine. This is The Pavilion, The Peel Cricket Show. My name's Orazio Santalucia, and I'm your host this week and every week. We are supported by Retrovision. We are supported by ESA Sports Agency. We are also supported by Everlast Sports Drinks. Get behind them because they get behind you. And thank you very much to Sport FM 91.3, who provide us with a platform to be able to share this show um, on the radio, on the FM dial 91.3, between 8 and 9 every Saturday morning. If you are listening, thank you. And... um, RAC members get exclusive deals and offers, plus an extra 5% off on top of our lowest price guarantee at Retrovision. We're going to ride this home. We've put the big sail up. The wind's picked up, and we're going to fly home with the wind. The sail's big, it's wet, all that sort of stuff. The spinnaker and all that sailing stuff, I've really got no idea. Um, um, But I know they put the big sail up when the wind's up, and it really pushes them along. I, I know that much, sort of. Um, anyway, uh, we're going to have a quick chat about the Retrovision Premier T20 League. We had the first semi final between Shoulder Bay and Singleton Irwinians. Now, if you remember, right up to the last ball, the score may not have indicated that. So, the score in the week before, Shoulder Bay had to win to get through. Um, and they won five for 170. They defeated Waruna six for 127. Now, Waruna went in top of that pool. Now, for Waruna, um, they could have they could have still got through if Shoalwater didn't win by enough. If that makes any sense. Shoalwater, um, they they got hammered in their first game, so they they didn't do very well. Uh, Waroon have done quite well, so net run rate and all that sort of because everyone finished on the same amount of points in that pool. So Shoalwater needed to win and win very well to get their percentage up. And they did enough. They got up by 43 runs. And I think they only got up by like, you know, a real tiny minuscule little bit. Um, uh, so they, they got up and they got through and that's all that matters. And then their first semifinal, they played single turner winnings, their former winners. So we've got two former winners of the, um, of the trophy there. Uh, Shoulder Bay won the toss and batted first. Uh, Corey Wosley, that, um, young Tyro, one of the better players going around in the, in the nation. In, uh, for a 17, pardon me, 17 year old, uh, he's going to go off and play second 11 cricket this week, uh, this weekend. They are taking on Tassie at the Wacker or at the WACA ground. Um, so that'll be about his third uh, second 11 game. I think that's quite outstanding for the, for the young man. Um, so he led the way. He got 60 not out of 42 with five sixes and three fours. Um, just really, really took them on. He batted with Liam Richards. They, they put on a partnership of 69 um, and Liam was out for 10. So you, you can see that Corey really sort of took it on. Um, Dudley, Cortland come in and, and look, he got 56 not out of 34. He'll be the first to tell you that wasn't anywhere near his best innings. He clunked a lot. He missed a lot just towards the back end. And this is the class of the play. And that's why he's one of the better players running around in the Peel Cricket Association. Just started to hold his shape, find his um, find his timing. He lined them up a bit better and um, started to get going. And he he made 56 off 34. Um, and then Brad Ranford come out right at the end, former Singleton player. Um, he got 13 off 14. And um, it, geez, it was really windy on Tuesday as well. Extra, I mean, it's always windy there at Peelwood Reserve, but it was extra windy. Um, and that makes it hard. And I think that makes it hard for everyone, not only the bowlers, uh, but the batters as well. Uh, Singleton dropped, dropped some catches. Their fielding wasn't great. They didn't have the greatest day in the field, unfortunately. And, and one, six, two, one, six, three to win is always going to be tough. And, um, they never really got going. Um, you know, you saw, uh, Chris Tormey at the start, he got 29 off 14, played some nice boundaries and, but, but he got out, uh, Nick Maiolo got 20 off 25, never really got going. Um, and then a couple of cameos towards the back end, but, the bowling, uh, Jackson Ward, he did it last week and he did it again this week. He bowls, he bowled six ball, well, he bowled 24 balls, obviously in his spell, and he bowls 24 different balls. Um, really smart, bowls very, yeah, quite slow, medium pace, um, and then bowls slower and then bowls leg cutters and bowls off cutters. He bowls wide of the crease, close to the cre- He's really, really smart. He took three for 18. Uh, Brad Branford took two for 18 off four. 
Uh, Mitch Smith got two for 16 off four, and that, that's where all the damage was done. Singleton just could never get going, and single and uh, Showwood is fielding, led by Mitch Oliver, as I said. Unbelievable fielding. Uh, did some stuff on the boundary that not many people can do. He's got an arm like an absolute rocket. Um, great pair of hands, moves well to the ball, attacks it. He's he's worth two or three plays in the field. He's fantastic fielder. Um, sort of sets a standard, the sort of stuff you want to see, and sort of did for his team. They were really, really good. That's two weeks in a row. We've seen shoulder. Um, probably one of the more more professional sort of setups in in the field. Um, they're really tight, get through their overs quick. Um, looks really, really good. So they're in they're in a really good space to defend that title they won last year. Who will they play? Well, we won't know until this Tuesday coming, where we'll see the Battle of the Bridge, as I call it. We've got Hallshead versus Mandra. Hallshead, obviously the hot team, um, just dominating, winning everything they see at the moment. And Mandra, um, they do really well in this tournament. They they really turn up. They plan well, pick a good side, and um, they they put on a show. So I've got no doubt in my mind this is going to be um, – this could well be the, the, the match of the Retrovision Premier T20 League. Um, the winner goes through, it'll be a cracker of grand final too, because, um, whoever plays against Shoalwater is going to have to work really, really hard to take the, the trophy off them. Um, but we've got two great weeks of T20 cricket and real good celebration of our game here in the Peel region. So, um, tune in live ball by ball coverage, commentary, etc. from yours truly. Um, hopefully getting Tim Lee's back on board this week. He's just uh, settling into his new role at Mandra Catholic College. So um, he's just settling back to living down here um, in um, well, in Perth. And um, yeah, just, just finding it hard to sort of find some time. But with any luck, we'll get him for this week. We've guaranteed him for the grand final anyway. Uh, speaking of the grand final, that's the one I want to really ramp up on people there this week, obviously Tuesday coming, but what? February the 7th, mark that in your diaries and get on down to Peelwood Reserve. We're going to have food trucks. We're going to have um, activation for the kids. We're going to have real fun and games. We're going to have music blaring. Uh, you're going to see a great game of cricket. You're going to see two teams go hammer and tongs and put on an absolute display. I want the whole of Peel Cricket to be there. As a president, I want it, I want it to be packed. I want it to be a uh, real good vibe there. And, and look, whether your team gets through or not, let's just get down there and just have fun and support. Um, a good product. Um, Retrovision do fantastic stuff in helping and supporting us and enabling us to put on the Retrovision Premier T20 League. What we want to see is we want to see a lot of people get behind it and uh, support it. So good luck to everyone still left. And um, But most of all, let's get down and let's celebrate the T20 cricket. Under lights, fantastic facility. How lucky are we? Um, let's see a crowd build up there. So that is pretty much starts to wrap up what was a busy, busy time in the Peel Cricket Association or in, in the surrounding areas. Um, good luck to everyone playing this weekend. Our Peel Cricket Association rep team, good luck to Rudgie and the boys. Um, I'm hoping to get down there myself, just do a little bit of helping out with the warm-ups and um, just do what presidents do, I guess. Probably just try to get out of the way and let the boys play. Um, so good luck to that. Good luck to everyone playing this weekend, including our girls who are doing really well in their um, ladies T20 competition. Look out for some extra news in regards to um, Women's Country Week, Country Masters. I know that's extremely popular. That'll be the back end of, um, back end of March, early April, I think it is, um, down in Donnybrook and Surround and Bunbury, et cetera. So um, uh, there's, there'll be news that'll go out about that. There's also another little opportunity for a City country game. Um, I'm just finalizing details on that, but look out for that one. That's a vets. There's two age groups in vets. I'll be able to play a city country sort of fixture. So uh, watch out for some details on that. So jump onto the website, um, peelcricket.com. Go into our socials, um, uh, Peel Cricket Association on Facebook or on Instagram, or jump on the YouTube channel where you can watch this show. You can watch any of the games we've had over the last couple of years and a couple of other bits and bobs. This is the Pavilion, or has been the Pavilion, the Peel Cricket Show. We are proudly supported by Retrovision, ESA Sports, and Everlast Sports Drinks. My name is Orazio Santa Lucia. Thank you very much for listening in, and we'll be back next week. At Retrovision, we know exactly what you want. 
like our lowest price guarantee. Buy now and pay later. And an extra 5% discount for RAC members. That's on top of all the latest tech from the world's best brands at Retrovision.